You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Random Fit. I am Wendy Batts here with my friend and co-host, Mr. Ken Miller. Ken, how are you? Things are good, Wendy. No complaints. How you doing? I am great. Uh, I know you've been quite the world traveler, so thanks for uh, being able to fit this in. Um, I'm super, super excited about today's topics, as always. And I know we um, are going to be talking about stair climbing and you know the benefits of it and i know um when you went to paris you were talking yeah. about um how many stairs you had to climb when you went to some you know to sightseeing and so today on stairway to fitness heaven um we are going to be discussing all things stair climbing <laughs> yeah and that, now that you've said that i just can't get that led zeppelin song out of my head <laughs> right, that nice slow gradual intro and then they, they you know they rock it at the end anyway um yeah we you know we stayed at this uh eight story basically it was an eight story building and <clears throat> i every day i would walk all eight stories of that of that building and it's just this nice big spiral staircase and um and the reason being is that i'll tell you what Nothing motivates you to climb stairs more than an elevator you have zero confidence in. It's <laughs> one of those, you know, they have that little metal grate that, you know, you have to pull across and then and then you have the door to close. So it's not like our, a modern day elevator where the doors just close. This is the one where you had to pull, pull the gate, <laughs> then close the door, let alone it was <clears throat> just big enough for two people and your carry-on or your luggage right so it's like i you know every time i got in there i don't know if this is gonna make it so i'll just you know i'll get a couple steps out of it um you know so i would i would go get some breakfast climb up the stairs and by the time i would get up there you know i'm I'm looking at my garmin and heart rate 146 145 146 and it got me breathing quite a bit. So I was like, okay, well, I'm getting my workout in. But I tell you what, Wendy, you find an elevator, you don't have confidence, you're going to climb stairs. (laughs) Well, uh, (laughs) yes. And yes. And if you go to some other countries, uh, you know, there are certain times where anything electronic shuts down, you were stuck going stairs. So when you're like, I want the best view in the highest hotel you can find. And then all of a sudden you realize you have to climb the stairs up and down multiple times. That is definitely a workout. Plus, we tell people, you know, activities of daily living. If you want to burn more calories, climb the stairs, try to park far, you know, all all the things we've discussed. But you know what? There's a ton of research out there. And that was one of the things when you said it, you know, I was looking to say, okay, what research has been done on stair climbing? What is really the purpose? And I know when we did Optima a few years ago live at NASM, or in Arizona with NASM, you know, there we met um, a couple and they actually met stair climbing, doing stair climbing races. And so I looked up a lot of information and we'll talk about some of those, but I mean, these things are held monthly and all over the, the nation and people actually compete um, climbing stairs. And so I found, you know, I was really excited about this topic because I learned a lot more. I knew, I mean, the benefits of stair climbing, but you know, we, we saw Harvard researchers or research. We found a lot of, um, you know, uh, studies that were showing that when you stair climb because of the cardiovascular, you know, um, fitness that you're doing and the aerobic capacity that you need, um, there were benefits in people's, um, what was it? Their lipoprotein profiles, their body weight obviously was reducing because the amount of calories burned. Um, the meta, you know, there was a, a um, protective, you know, against your metabolic syndrome. So like if anyone's learned a little bit more about that, but I mean, there was just, there's so many positives in, you know, and it's also an alternative for people that want to change up their daily walks, their typical jogging, you know, things that they do all the time, throwing in stairs, which I do with my clients. Often we have a stairwell that I'm like, Hey, run up and down. And we do different, um, they have to go one step, two step. They always come down slow and controlled. But it is something that will get your heart up very, or heart rate up very, very quickly. Yeah, and 
I just remember, you know, when you and I used to travel together, we'd go to Arizona for our meetings mm -hmm. and the hotel that we would stay at, what is that, six stories? Mm -hmm. And I just remember one time, I think you were getting off the stairs and I was I was <laughs> getting into the uh, into the stairway. And we were, you know, because here's the thing. I mean, the, the hotels we stay at, usually we were, were, were fortunate enough to stay at hotels with treadmills, with bikes. Um, very rarely you, you do have a stair mask because just because something like a stair based uh, piece of equipment, it takes up a lot of space mm -hmm. uh, and they're usually very expensive. So, you know, the investment to put one in each hotel within a chain, it's expensive. But when we're in Phoenix and it's a hundred and something, <laughs> 110 degrees high and it's already 90 degrees um, after breakfast, um, get, you know, so running outside uh, is, not exactly what this California guy likes to do um, in in July, but you know to challenge um, differently because I don't have um, stairs that I can climb. So it's I take advantage of it uh, from a travel standpoint. So um, going up, you know, jogging a floor, walking a floor, jogging a floor, walking a floor. Because as you said, it's it's it can be a bear of an exercise if you're doing it and you don't do it that often. So when you do get a chance to do it, you know, you still have to try to be smart about it, but six floors up and down. I don't know how many times I would do that. Maybe six or seven <clears throat> repetitions just to, you know, get some cardio going before I, I get into the weight room. But, you know, for those people that compete and go into those competitions, Whew. I just, I can't imagine. That's that's a. I mean, that's a burn already with the quads and the and the hips. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's it's just a great way to mix things up, and it's something I, that I all the time when my clients travel, I said, hey, you know, whatever floor you're on, try and walk up. You know, if yeah. you can have access to the stairwell, walk up to your room every day at least once. Go from breakfast, walk up the stairwell. You know, just to mix everything, mix things up, just for the benefits that you mentioned, Wendy. Well, and I think it's interesting, too, because, you know, obviously, I remember that Arizona trip very well. I couldn't sleep. I was going, you know, East Coast to West Coast. So I was up super, super early and I didn't want to go running, you know, in the dark. And so I was like, what better way to get my workout in than running up and down the stairs? And so when I ran into you, I was a, a sweaty mess. And you're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm taking the stairs and just doing this for my workout. And, and you were actually on your way to start. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. However, I guess maybe we could have challenged each other and done it together, but I didn't even yeah. know that was something that you were going to do. So I found it interesting that, you know, especially in our, you know, in our field that, you know, we're looking at what we have available and then taking advantage of that. But, you know, with, with some of the other research that we were saying, I'm like, okay, you know, you know, I think it said like 10 to 12 steps that you take is going to, you know, so basically one flight of stairs burns anywhere from two to five calories. And so, you know, the calories in versus calories out, you know, there's obviously a lot more to that. Um, but, you know, if I know that I'm going to be sitting a lot and doing things with meetings, you know, getting up and trying to take advantage of, of trying to burn as many calories as I can to start my day. Um, I find I love climbing stairs, as weird as that sounds. And um, and it's a really good workout. I mean, when you're climbing stairs, you're targeting your calves, your quads, obviously your glutes, like you said, your hips. Um, I don't do anything fancy. I don't go up and down sideways. You know, I'll go up one step, always coming down one, going up two, coming down one. Um, and one, because, I mean, we're going to talk about this too. If you have not been like maybe putting stairs into your workout, you need to start slow because it is a lot of pounding on your joints, especially coming down when you're decelerating. And so, you know, one of the things that if you're starting to do this or you want to begin you number one thing, start slow, you know, just, you know, maybe 10 minutes and you just go at a pace where you're comfortable. You're going to feel your heart rate shoot up pretty quickly. And then, you know, people do this for like 30 minutes at a time and they start then increasing their pace and then, you know, skipping steps and doing things on the way up. But I always caution people, no matter what, coming down, just do one because it's easy to lose your footing if you try to skip going down. And then that's when you're really going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And I think progression, as you're talking about it, Wendy, um, when you do have access to stairs, and again, we're talking about physical stairs, not just the moving stairway. Um, <clears throat> if you have a gym membership and have something like a Stairmaster, but, you know, taking it easy, like you said, 
taking it one step at a time, right? Uh, and and what that does is it modifies the, I guess, the amplitude or the intensity of the stare itself. So you're going to definitely take more steps per per story. But overall, you know, what we're doing here is we're just managing the amount of load that's coming in, as you, as you mentioned, through the ankles, the knees, and the hips. So if you're listening to here, myself, Ken Miller, and Wendy Matz on Random Fit, we are talking about the stairway to fitness heaven, heaven and how basically how you progress it. Um, so if you're going to a bigger city where you're staying in a, in a, in a, a higher storied hotel, take it one at a time, especially if it's not something you have access to all the time. And, and like what Wendy, you and I are talking about, we, we both hit the stairs because it's something novel. We don't have, you don't have it readily available to us. So, you know, you got to challenge the body when you can, where you can, but we also have to be smart on taking on that new challenge. So as I mentioned earlier, I would walk a walk one story and then I would jog one story, walk one story, jog one story. But where I really uh, tell my clients to pay attention, just like what you said, Wendy, it's because you go, you skip a stair, perhaps on your way up, you don't want to skip a stair on the way down, not just because of safety. And <clears throat> if you were to take that extra big step, if you miss, you're going to pay a little bit of price. Mm -hmm. But now you, you have to remember that you have more mass and momentum descending, which means that's a lot more force that's going to come through the knees. Um, and if you're not ready for it, and you do like that example that I said, six story building, I went up six, seven times. And you do that every time coming down, that's a lot of force coming to the knee that your knee really isn't prepared for. So mm -hmm. you may not feel it then, but be ready to, you know, experience something that next day or maybe even later on that day if that's how you challenge yourself so be wary of not just the ascent but the descent is where you're gonna have a lot more of that force you may not feel it immediately but just be aware that that's a lot of stress and tension on the um on the tendons especially because that's where a lot of that force is going to be coming through Yes. And it is a lot. And, you know, you really don't think about it, you know, because I mean, I run up and down the stairs in my house all the time, but it's totally different when you're doing it in a continuous, you know, going up, going down, going up and down. And then you're timing yourself for the amount of minutes that you do, because like I said, I'll run up and down a, a ton throughout the day if I'm, especially if I'm doing laundry or whatever it is that I need to get done. And so, you know, I don't really think about it, but when I'm actually thinking about it, because it's, it's, you know, I do it as a cross training thing too. You know, I can, you know, I love to play tennis. I'm trying to get myself back into running. So, you know, it was raining the other day. So what better way instead of running cross training, I'm still utilizing the same movement patterns, same muscles, but it was just completely different. So that's one of the things that I tell people when they're training for marathons or half marathons or five Ks or whatever it is you know, do something different because the more you challenge yourself, you know, we talk about what, the, what we call the said principle, which is you get what you train for, right? If you're doing the same thing over and over, your body starts to adapt to that demand. And so therefore you're not burning as many calories because your body's used to it. So if you go and you can run and you're running, you know, 30 minutes or more, or however long your run is, then maybe one day um, separately, instead of going for that run, maybe just do 10 to 15 minutes of stair climbing and see how you feel. And you're going to notice that there is a significant difference um, in how you feel, how heavy you're breathing, because your body's being challenged in a completely different way. Um, but also too, you start to feel something that doesn't feel right, then shut it down. Then don't push through it. Because at that point, you know, if your knee's not tracking right, then you could actually hurt yourself. So when you start running again, you've kind of caused a, you know, minor injury that you're going to then run on. And, and I think I read somewhere um, 10 to 12 steps equals the equivalent of 38 steps when you're walking flat. So think about that too. I mean, you know, you're, you're moving less, if you will, but you're moving upward, which is more challenging. And so, you know, you're going to cover more ground. Um, but when you add that incline, you know, meaning a stair, it really does make a significant difference. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and I'll say that, you know, when it comes to stairs, <clears throat> again, we're talking about progressions. Um, having worked in collegiate sports, 
I had access, you know, I'd step out of my office <clears throat> out of the strength conditioning room and we would just go into Memorial Stadium because, you know, at the time I was a strength coach at Cal and um, depending on depending on where we were in the year, I'm not going to have the athletes do stairs. Basically, they'll go up one section and go lateral across and go down another section. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's it's one of those, you know, just they, they do it yearly where they do the whole stadium. But we'd also I, I do what I can to get them prepared just because of all those things. Um, you're using your hips differently. You're using your thighs differently. Um, that's a for every stair you go up, you got to come down. <laughs> so um, it's one of those, you know, it was uh, we, we had to pay attention because. Uh, there, there, there would be times where, you know, the, the, the hips would start to feel it. The low back would feel it just because of, you know, those compensation patterns where you, they start to lean over, you know, when they're, when they're especially trudging, when you get to the point where you're trudging up the stair and, and you're leaned over, you're bent over, you got your hands on your thighs and every step means something. Um, so that's where you want to maybe work on one quarter of the stadium add it make it a half maybe three quarters and then eventually work your way up to a full stadium which i don't know wendy have you ever you know you've you've been to some big universities have you ever done a whole stadium i have and you know the sad thing is is i love to try to challenge myself so i actually thoroughly enjoyed it <laughs> Um, I didn't at the time, but when I was done, I, you know, it's a big feeling of accomplishment and, uh, and some of the universities that I've been to are, are pretty big universities with very, oh, very man. big stadiums. And so, um, but that was one of the things too. I mean, even when, when I get an opportunity, if I'm even on a track, you know, I may do some running on the track. I may, you know, jog and then do some sprints. Like, obviously there's, you know, far like, there's a bunch of different things that you can do when you're trying to cross train. Right. But then, you know, maybe, you know, at the end of each session, that's when I'll go up and say, okay, I'm going to run the stairs. And like you, you know, instead of going and running the whole stairs, sometimes I'll just zigzag. I'll go up one side, you know, and then down and then up and then mm -hmm. down. And so on the down though, I slow it down. I try to, you know, get my heart rate back down. Yeah. I've been, um, I've been fortunate because I've, that is good enough, t enough time for me to kind of uh, reestablish myself, to get myself mentally prepared to go back up, you know, and, and if you do it right, Ken, you know, there are so many benefits. And, and again, you know, this isn't just benefits that we made up. This is all according to different research that we found, but of course you're, you're burning calories, you're building muscle. You don't need any special equipment. That's why I really like it, especially when you're doing virtual training. Um, sometimes, you know, clients don't have cardio equipment and so they do have stairs. And so I have my clients take their iPad over, put it down at the bottom of the stairs and I watch them go up and down. And sometimes I'll have them go up one, down one. They do that three times and they skip and then down um, three times. And that's kind of their little metabolic blast yeah. that I give them. Then they recover and then we'll start the the, ne the next set of whatever resistance training we're doing. Again, you know, we worked ourselves up to that. Obviously, the first few times it was one or two times going up and down different passes. But, you know, you know, it's burning fat. You know, you're increasing your heart rate, of course, which is obviously, you know, working your heart. Um, you are going to um, lower your muscle mass or I'm sorry, your body muscle uh, fat, which is going to be good. You're reducing your cholesterol levels, which obviously is super important. And then, of course, long term, you're increasing your stamina and your energy. And, you know, I mean, you know, the people that, that like the quote tone look, if you will. I mean, you're working right. all those muscles that people want to see. And so they are the big muscles. Of course, with big muscles, it's burning more calories. So if you're looking at all the positives, that's huge. But you mentioned something very, very important. And I'm going to take it away from even the stairs. If you're if you're in the gym and you want to use the stair climber, I love that piece of equipment. I love it. But there's no need to get fancy on it. And if you're leaning over like on the railing and you're in a hunched and bent position, you're really not setting yourself up <laughs> to burn as many calories as you should. And if you're not careful, you can actually end up hurting, like you said, your lower back, your knees, your even, you know, your shoulders, depending on, on your positioning of your head and neck. Yeah. And, and that's uh, I mean. If you've been in this industry a while and you've got one of those machines, it's, you know, half the time you struggle. And this is where I really realized that, 
you know, as a personal trainer, I'm there to help people, right? So whatever facility I'm in, if there's a stairmaster, <clears throat> you know, eight eight out of ten people that get on there are just they're going for the number, right? I I gotta walk my 600 calories today on the stairman, however they do it, right? And it's you know they're they've got that death grip on there. They're holding onto the railing, their arms extended, and they're just you know they're hold like they're trying to do a pull up almost. They're they're so extended and they're so reaching. And uh, Wendy, it's just you, this is where again as a fitness professional, you you want to tell people if there's anything that you're gonna do to hurt yourself today, this is it, right? But mm -hmm. you know in the end you realize you can't you can't save everybody. Um, but when you when you really find out their motivation and then they say yeah i i i'm trying to hit 500 calories i'm trying to hit six it's a lot of calories for one training session but they love it because you feel it you're sweaty and the display shows it right there's some machines where it's like it shows 400 calories like you didn't do 400 calories of work today um <laughs> but yeah just, i mean they're, when they're when they're going for the cal then you know they're sacrificing posture they're sacrificing safety and position when it comes to their low back. So, you know, they come off feeling worse than when they got on because they're leaning so far forward, then it's their low back muscles that are that are holding them up. Or they I love the ones where they where they have their hands on the railing and they're basically holding themselves up. They've locked their elbows out and they're shrugging, right? They're just holding on, you know, through their mm -hmm. through their shoulder blades or their their neck muscles and <clears throat> you know, their legs are only doing fraction work but you know this is where i you know to to make it a learning or a teaching opportunity it's you know you're going to spend more calories when you don't touch the railing and when you stand a little bit more upright a little lean is good and when you're truly using those lower body um muscles hips thighs calves um to to get that knee drive and to get that strong push and you know if it means the display doesn't, you know, the, if, you know, if it means that the display isn't showing the number that you want, but heck, you know, you're going to feel it in all the right places. So Stairmaster is great. And I'm glad you love it because I got, I touched that thing maybe twice in my whole. Career. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> That's my piece to go to, by the way. Um, but I will say this, you know, to, to your point, um, and, and I'm just, I want to say this out loud because this was something that I said to a client of mine that was in that position you were talking about. They were, they were really struggling because they were trying to keep up with the pace that they had set for the reasons that you said they wanted to be able to, you know, do so many stairs within, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of however long they were doing their session. But she, you know, had complained in the past about low back pain. Guys, think about this. If you're bent over, then you are putting that excess stress. However, one thing that most, especially women want is they want to work their, their calves, their quads and their glutes, right? We're doing that. We're really trying to build the lower musculature. Um, and, and so if you're in a hip flex or your bent position, then you're really not getting full glute activation. And so first and foremost, like you said, you know, the rails are there for safety. If you feel like you need them for balance, that's what you want to use them for. But you shouldn't have the death grip and holding yourself up while you're doing that. So try and this is the challenge that I have. Step with your foot you know, forward. Try not to lean. Like you said, there's going to be a small lean forward because that's what you need to do to make sure you're properly loading the ankle, the knee and the hip correctly. But when you stand up, fully extend, get a good glute squeeze and then move on to the next the next leg. And if you do that consistently, you're working all the muscles that were intended to be worked at whatever whatever pace it is. Start at a pace where you can do that first, then increase the speed and time. Um, because you're, if you're using all of these bigger muscles, it's going to burn and it, it's going to hurt, but that's why you're doing it. Right. Um, and the second thing that I also, you know, see, and, and I am going to say this again, because I'll see people do this, Ken, and I know you do too, is, you know, people will stand, they'll go super slow, but then they do this like kick, you know, they kick out. And so they're like, oh, I'm getting more glute, but yet their foot is in a, you know, turned position. So it's not like they're kicking their foot straight out where their toe is still pointed forward. They actually, you know, kick it out to the side. So it's like their foot is, is um, kind of going out outward or what we would say externally rotates. 
And that's actually causing a lot of stress to the piriformis, which attaches to your, um, your sciatic, you know, your sciatic nerve runs either through it or beside it, but it attaches to your sacrum. So it's easy to throw your hips off. Um, and when I say your hips off, yeah. not while you're doing the exercise, but when you get off, you're actually going to be not in a neutral position. Plus that extra kick that you're doing, guys, I mean, you only have 10 to 15 degrees of hip extension, which is not that much when you're standing. And so if you're doing this really excessive kick, you're going to end up arching your back, which then causes more strain to the lumbar spine, which can then increase lumbar, um, you know, lumbar flexion and, and, and compression. And so you just want to be careful and have really good mechanics when you're doing this, because again, if you want to do it as a, as a cardio, it's something you enjoy, or if you're doing it in hotels, all in all, your positioning is going to be the most important thing, but safety first. And so these are things to look for. Maybe check yourself because I have had to check myself and I get tired. I turn my hands backwards and I do hold on. Um, but if you want to get a good workout, try not to try not to hold on unless again, it's a balanced thing. And then just try to think about your form and positioning. Yep. It's all, it's all about posture. I mean, just like if you're running, right, you have running ideal running posture. Um, again, we have to look at this for what it is. It is cardio, right? So as we're talking about uh, stairway to fitness heaven, you're listening to myself, Ken Miller and Wendy Betts on random fit. And again, it's, you know, as of this recording, it's summertime, depending on where you are. Sometimes the weather is really nice and you want to get outside. So, but you can overdo it with the running. So mixing things up and, and, and finding some stairs to climb, or in this example, we're talking about Stairmaster, um, <clears throat> as, a, as, as a major player when it comes to performing that exercise indoors. And I, I want to say, Wendy, that too, um, I don't know how hilly your area is, um pretty hilly. one of the pretty hilly yeah so here in in the san francisco oakland bay area there's a lot of the hills um, a lot of inclined places and you know san francisco was built on on seven hills right so uh there's there's areas that you can go to if you want to do the stair climb if you don't have a stadium um <clears throat> to hit just like what we mentioned you know there are depending on where you are where you live there are there can be some areas where there are stairs, significant amount of stairs, consecutive um, that, you know, can go through some nice neighborhoods like what we have in the San Francisco area. So, um, <clears throat> you know, being where I am and having clients in, in my local area, if you're out and about, <clears throat> you want to see a different part of town, go out there, pay attention to all those things we're talking about with posture, position, um, you know, when you're when you're taking that next step. But also take the time to be outside, see someplace else um, and get your conditioning out there. Um, you know, while you're, you know, you can be a tourist in your own city is what I encourage a lot of my clients to do too. So look up stairways in your fill in the blank city and, you know, go up and down stairs, you know, there. So there'll be times where, you know, we'll be on the other side of, 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 um, of town or on the other side of the bay and you know there's some nice places that you can go to just to get you know a different feel get outside get some fresh air while you're while you're working out you know nothing well, nothing like getting a, a a big lung full of outdoor fresh air well and yeah and, and it go uh, excuse me and of course you and i can talk a lot about the different types of benefits of course we hit a bunch of them but one of the things that i i wanted to kind of finish with myself was I, I went in and looked at stair races and Ken, the amount of yeah. races that they have. And like I said, and I mentioned it in the beginning nationwide was something that kind of surprised me. So for example, they have a bunch that are just called stair climb, but they have stair climb in Denver. So think about that. This is coming up at the end of July and think about altitude. So that's going to be crazy. They have another one like in August in Michigan. So I'm like, okay, if you want to, if you're out there, of course, Tacoma, Washington. But the one thing in September that I thought was very interesting that I saw was they have one in Philadelphia and it's called the 24 hour stair climb, 24 hour stair yeah. climb, mind you. So there are, and now, and there's one, another one um, in Biloxi, Mississippi, that's a 5k run or stair climb or and stair climb. And so, 
you know, there's so many offerings out there that, you know, stairs can be involved. If it's something that you enjoy and you like, maybe challenge yourself because I think the 5K stair climb, that could be very interesting. I mean, obviously you want to practice and you want to go through the, the things that Ken and I are talking about. But um, I just, I mean, I just wanted to throw that out there because when I saw the differences in some of the competitions that they have, and when I say competitions, these people train hard for these events to win. So uh, I would not be a, uh, a top contender, if you will, but I think it would be something that I enjoy. Plus, it's also a good social event if you can get your friends and family to join along. So I, I was super glad when you when you were talking about the stairs that you're like, let's do something on Random Fit. So, Ken, thanks for the idea. And uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed our conversation. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's like what you and I always encourage, you know, try something new, challenge your body, but be smart about it right? There's, there's, I mean, you threw out a lot of anatomy, a lot of physiology, but you know what? It's just another, you know, it's just another way to challenge yourself and, and, you know, see what your body can do. It can, it can do a lot of things and going upstairs. I, I don't know about doing 5k worth of <laughs> about 24 hours worth. <laughs> <Holy moly. laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's gotta be a nap in there somewhere. Yeah. I just, I, I just, or something. Yeah. Maybe it's a tag team thing. Again, I just pulled up upcoming stair races and this is what, what ended up pop, populating. So right. um, don't oh, know the man. details about them. However, if, it, if it's something that sparks your interest, look it up. They're there. Yeah. yeah. They're out there. It's out there. So Wendy, thanks again. As always, always good uh, talking to you, especially about uh, things like stair climbing, um, <laughs> which you can tell me all your experience because I have nothing. I have nothing to offer. Uh, so for everybody listening to us here, both Wendy Bats and I, Ken Miller, on this episode of Random Fit, uh, talking about the stairway to fitness heaven. Um, if you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, uh, comment, and uh, of course, download and share. Let us know if there's anything else you want us to talk about. But uh, it was our pleasure to talk about this topic today, but we will be more than happy about talking about something you want to listen to on future episodes around the fit. So until next time, everybody take care and be well.